Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Rowell. All right, this is gonna be kind of a sad one today. I found out about a week ago that a very close friend of mine at Disneyland, a guy named Gary Carlson, passed away after a brief illness. Um, Gary was one of the mechanics at Disneyland and he was the guy who was responsible for making sure that when the floats went out for our parades that the audio worked properly. The audio system on the floats is very, very complex because it has to be able to synchronize with the music being broadcast through the speakers along the parade route. And of course, each float had its own music. So as the floats proceeded down the parade route, uh, the, they will move from zone to zone to zone and the speaker had to be playing the right music for the for that particular zone for that particular float and it had to rem remain sunk up with the audio that was that was uh, being uh, broadcast from the float and it was a very complex procedure and Gary was the guy who made sure everything was working and when it wasn't working uh, he was the one that figured out how to fix it uh, now like I said, he passed away uh, uh, on about January 8th, I believe. That's when I first heard about it. And um, a friend, and another friend at Disneyland created a tribute page to Gary on Facebook and has been encouraging people to post videos, post memories, post uh, anything they remember about Gary. And I decided I wanted to produce a video and tell some of my own personal stories of Gary and some of my memories. So this is that video. I was saddened to hear of the passing of my friend Gary Carlson uh, about a week and a half ago. Um, Gary was a very special person to me and I'm grateful that Christina put a Facebook page up to allow some of us to share our memories of Gary. Um, there's so many more memories I have of him, but I'm going to try and share a few of them right now. Uh, when I resigned from Disney almost three years ago now, uh, I knew before I, before I left the company that Gary was the one person I wanted to say goodbye to. And on the day I did resign, I actually wandered around the park for about an hour ahead of time trying to find Gary because I had told him over the years that I wasn't really happy at Disney and that I had to leave and it got to the point where I think he just said yeah yeah right sure because it got to the point where every time I'd say that he'd just kind of roll his eyes at me and it's like so I wanted to let him know that I was finally escaping the mouse and uh, say my final goodbye to him. Unfortunately, I never did get a chance to find him and I'll really be uh, I really am sad that that happened um, Gary had all sorts of great stories I think probably the most commonly told story about Gary was that he had been with Disney for such a long time that he actually knew Walt Disney when Walt was uh, actively running the park uh, he tells multiple times about uh, how how he uh, had met Walt and the far first time made the mistake of referring to him as Mr. Disney only to have Walt correct him and says no I'm Walt and got to the point where Walt treated people over there almost like family to the point where he got to know your name he got to know about your life and he'd come up to you just out of the blue and just uh, say hi how you doing Gary how's how's uh, things going and uh, how's this project going how's that project going that was something I think that was uh, uh, very special about Gary because Gary provided a very real connection with Walt. I almost felt like I knew Walt because I knew Gary, and uh, that is a that that is a very special thing for me. Now, uh, one of the other things that uh, kind of caught my attention uh, and made made uh, Gary kind of a person of interest with me was that before he worked at Disney, he uh, actually worked in the movie industry. Uh, he was involved uh, in some of the Disney movies and from my understanding uh, his father started out in the business and then when his father retired Gary kind of took over and became uh, became uh, an audio person in the uh, in the movie business now one of my favorite memories of Gary involved a movie that I was very fond of in the as a kid called the black hole it was a Disney movie about uh, mad scientists that were trying to take a ship into a black hole and 
I was very fascinated with astronomy and space and all that at the time, so I loved that movie. It was one of my favorite movies. Ironically, I've watched the movie now again as an adult, and it is virtually unwatchable. It is such a, a horrible movie, but it's kind of an interesting uh, thing about how how your uh, what you tolerate in movies changes when, from between when you're a kid. But it was fun to hear Gary talk about that and talk about how. Uh, how cheaply the sets were were constructed and how cheesy the dialogue was and stuff like that. He talked about, you know, times, times people be walking around the sets and the, and the sets will be wobbling because they were so poorly constructed. Uh, like I said, it was fun to hear, to have the connection with that movie because, like I said, it was such an important part of my life as a child. Uh, one of the other things I really appreciated about Gary was he was always willing to share knowledge. Uh, that was something that was kind of unusual with the mechanics. Gary was a parade maintenance mechanic. Uh, he was basically a PM30. His job was to make sure the audio on the floats were all working uh, before we go out on, on the parade route. And Gary, uh, you know, was, was, you know, realized right off the bat that I was sort of into that kind of thing too. So he was always willing to talk to me about it. Uh, kind of my way of doing things is I like to understand how things work. And so, you know, I'd sit there and I'd study the audio rack and the floats and, and kind of come up with a picture in my head how it all worked. And, uh, and at that point, you know, I'd discuss it with Gary and try and, you know, get things more accurate and stuff like that. Gary was so willing to take the time to sit and talk with you, explain how this worked and how, how the, you know, everything's synchronized, the time code and the audio is, uh, you know, tracked, the floats are tracked as they go down the parade route. So we make sure the right audio is coming out of the right speakers at the right time and that both the float audio and the house audio were synchronized. That was very important because, you know, back in the old days, apparently what they used to do is just have an eight track tape on the float and you just, press the tape in there, uh, press play, and that was the audio. But as time went by, it went way more complicated. And Gary was a master at making that thing, making those floats dance. And uh, he was also a master at helping people understand them and, uh, and how things work. Um, I know that uh, a lot of people who've had their lives touched by Gary, um, and uh, those of us who have will remember him for the rest of our lives. I feel honored to have been one of them. Rest in peace, Gary.